baby, it's cold outside. But baby, it's cold outside. Been hoping that you drop in. I'll hold your hands, they're just like ice. Beautiful, what's your mind? Listen to the fireplace roar. Beautiful, please don't hurry. Put some records on while I pour. Baby, it's bad out there. No cabs to be had out there. Your eyes are like starlight now. I'll take your hat, your hair looks swell. Mind if I'm moving closer. What's the sense of hurt, my pride? Oh, baby, don't hold out. Baby, it's cold outside. Baby, it's cold outside. Baby, it's cold outside. How lucky that you dropped in. Look out the window at the storm. Gosh, your lips look delicious. Waves upon the tropical shore. Gosh, your lips are delicious. Never such a visit before. But baby, you'd freeze out there. It's up to your knees out there. I thrill when you touch my hands. How can you do this thing to me? Think of my life long sorrow. If you got pneumonia and I get over that old doubt. Baby, it's cold. Baby, it's cold outside. Okay, welcome to tonight's webinar. Kendra Helfter is going to be doing a webinar for you this evening on keeping your horses um, healthy during the winter months. I'm going to turn it over to Kendra. Kendra, are you there? I am. I'm going to go ahead and get started. As Carrie indicated, tonight's seminar or webinar will be on maintaining horses in the winter. As the temperatures get really chilly, we have to understand how the horse's body responds to those temperatures. Uh, between 15 and 60 degrees Fahrenheit, the horse is considered to be energy neutral. That means extra calories are not necessary or required for the, for the horse to stay warm. Unless, of course, there's wind or if their hair coat is wet, then energy, additional energy will be required. Energy requirements increase 1% for every degree below 16 degrees. In order to be prepared for our winter months, it's helpful to understand how the horse's body will use those calories to maintain its weight and condition in the wintertime or at any other time that it's, it's lost access to calories. At first, the body will burn fat and protein from muscle tissue, will burn fat and protein from muscle tissue as energy. Fat is used first along the ribs, the crest of the neck, and the rump. Muscle tissue will then start to be sacrificed, beginning at the neck, the shoulder, the hindquarters. So before we go into winter, it's wise to get um, a feel for where the horse's weight should be, because once they get their, their thick winter coat, it's difficult to gauge that horse's condition. But throughout the winter, you want to feel the horse, make sure that you run your hands along the rib cage and over the spine, maybe before they get their winter coat, um, get out a weight tape, and then also when they get their winter coat, do a weight tape at that time. 
and keep track of that data. As far as giving the horse to simulate calories, we are relying on the digestive system to break down those calories and provide it for the body to use. On the upper left-hand corner, we're seeing tissues of a healthy intestinal lining. And then in the right-hand corner, we're seeing what tissues look like if there's damaged intestinal lining. Generally, that will occur with inflammation. And for whatever that may be, there can be several different causes for that inflammation. But continued inflammation will begin to break down the tissue lining of the digestive tract. And what happens then is that this exterior wall that you're seeing here is really closed off. Material is being kept inside the tissues of the digestive system. Here, we're losing integrity of that wall. And toxins or whatnot are able to then leak into the digestive system, the bloodstream, which is called leaky gut or also termed dysbiosis. The villi on top of here is what assimilates or uh, absorbs some of those nutrients that goes into the intestinal lining. When we have a leaky gut syndrome, you will see that undigested food particles, toxins, will then be able to reach and flow into the bloodstream. Parasites also and other harmful bacteria. When that occurs, that's when you see a response of inflammation. You can see allergies, COPD, respiratory issues, and, and all kinds of uh, health issues. And we can discuss that later in another webinar. But getting back to on how we're going to, how the digestive system is going to work for us as far as providing food. The small intestine, well, once the food is consumed, it goes into the stomach. The stomach in a horse is about one gallon. Then that food is then transported or moved into the small intestine where grains and concentrates, and concentrates would be supplements, um, things of that nature. In that particular area of the body, there is little heat generated. Um, grains and concentrates are broke down or just are broke down or digested there with enzymatic activity. When we're looking for uh, heat generation, we're going to rely on the large intestine and the cecum. And that's where your long stem fibers, your forages, get digested um, and broke down. When, that pro when those processors are, are going on, that generates heat in the body. Those processes predominantly in there um, are bacterial or for bacterial fermentation. That's what, how those food particles get broke down. So when we're looking at generating body heat or some calories, maintaining the horse's original source of eating was a fiber, fiber, fiber. They're meant to eat grass. They're meant to eat fiber sources. And we can rely on, on that digestion process to provide heat to the body. For every five pounds of extra hay, we'll raise the average horse's core body temperature 1.2 degrees for nearly four hours. This picture was in 1945, and that's when horses had an opportunity or were expected to help with providing their own food. It's very different now. So when we look at fiber sources, there's, uh, there's good kinds. And there's a, a thumbs down or a thumbs up is how I used it here. The obvious, of course, is hay. Um, chopped hay can be chopped and then packaged so that it can be shipped and uh, is available with low calories and high calories, the alfalfa and timothy or a mix. Sometimes supplements are added. Those are good options. Then we get into cubed hay. And you will have timothy cubes, alfalfa cubes, and also you can get alfalfa and timothy cubes together. Um, in the winter months, I take an opportunity with the cubed hay to hydrate the body um, as well. And so I'll add water um, to the hay cubes at this time. Another source uh, is beet pulp. And we are now available to, are available to get our beet pulp without molasses on it. Um, especially since we have special needs horses and, and senior horses 
this has become more available and has certainly been a, a, a wonderful thing. Uh, the bee pulp is another carrier of, of water or for eye hydration for the horse. Um, it is a long stem fiber. Once it, it reaches the hind gut, it uh, provides an environment where microflora can replenish and multiply to break down uh, the fiber that's in the, the large intestine cecum at that time. Um, not only does the beet pole provide something for the horse to do, sometimes the senior horses, they don't have the opportunity to eat, eat, to eat hay any longer, um, but we're also providing the cecum and a large uh, colon for them, for that fiber to be broke down, uh, gives, provides that body heat again. When you're using bee pulp, you want to add half water and half bee pulp. Generally, soak it 24 hours. Um, when you are prepared to feed it, you drain off the water, and the bee pulp should be light and fluffy. Because of its nutrient imbalances, generally, the bee pulp is not fed more than 25% of the total diet. But it, it, it is a good, a good source for helping us to generate body heat, get calories into the horse. Another source is sunflower seeds. Um, it's termed boss or black oil sunflower seeds. And these um, are very fibrous. They provide a fat source uh, for calories. A fat source will facilitate absorptions of those fat-soluble vitamins like A, D, E, and, and vitamin K. You don't generally want to use more than two pounds per day of the black oil sunflower seeds because it contains more of the omega-6 essential fatty acid, with, which can um, create an inflammatory response in the body. It has less of the omega-3 essential fatty acids, which is what we use a lot as an uh, anti-inflammatory in some of our diets. For thumbs down sources, I uh, generally stay away from hay pellets because they don't have that long stem fiber. They're chopped into little tiny pieces, um, so we're not going to get reap a whole lot of benefit from using hay pellets. Brand mashes or um, some people feed brand uh, just because of special needs cases, EMS horses, uh, insulin resistant horses, or metabolic syndrome horses. I just stay away from brands. I'm trying to also uh, steer people away from in the wintertime, generally this will occur where they'll mix a brand mash, a warm brand mash, and they'll truck out to the barn and and give that horse a treat for that one day. And it, it, may, it may make them feel good momentarily. It may make you feel good momentarily. And it, indeed, it is another way of, of providing hydration to the horse. But we're asking the digestive system to change from this six-day diet to all of a sudden now digesting these brands, this brand mash. So it can disturb pH and it can stir, disturb microbial action. So it's just best just to kind of stay away from that. Um, complete feeds, once again, they contain fiber, but again, they're that short, short fiber source. There's, we don't have that long stem fiber coming in from complete, complete feeds. And it's also considered a processed food. Processed foods lose a lot of their nutrient value, you can't see what's being used to manufacture this processed feed. The, the quality of the feed, feedstuffs used to make processed feeds are, are generally very lacking. And so the best way that I can describe to people the difference between feeding processed food and, and non-processed food um, is, I'll say, do you want to feed a hot dog to your, to your horse if they could eat hot dogs? Or would you rather feed them a nice, uh, well-prepared pork chop? So hot dog or pork chop, that's where we're kind of going with processed food. So we try and stay away from, from those, especially when we're trying to put calories on a horse. 
do senior feeds help? Yes, I believe they help some horses. Um, when we're really working with a compromised horse, some of these may actually need to be used. It's just not one of my first choices. If we're still losing the battle, we're not able to keep this horse warm or we're not able to put on some calories, My next, with, with fiber alone at this point, I will add my first and foremost is stabilized flax meal. Many, many years ago, like 10 years ago, it wasn't available. It's becoming more and more available. You could get it in your grocery stores. You don't have to feed a whole lot of it. But it is a very good source of fat, uh, which is a different calorie source. And a very one, and a fat calorie sources are easy for our horses to assimilate. And it does put weight on quickly. Hemp meal, coconut oil, flax oil, hemp oil, some of those, some of those are just other choices that you can, can use. But increased fat in the diet will reduce an acidic environment in the gut. Less grain diets reduce excessive grain fermentation, which disrupt microbial population of the hind gut. Fats are, are they're, they're just really good because they help with the skin, they assist with hoof health, they help with arthritis. Flax oil, for instance, is 50% omega-3 and 15% omega-6. So it, it's 50% an anti, acting as an anti-inflammatory in the body. Corn oil, on the other hand, is cheaper, but it is predominantly omega-6, one of those ingredients that is going to possibly stim, stimulate a inflammatory uh, response in the horse's body. Fats are used efficiently in the digestive system. Up to 90% of that can be used for energy for the horse. Hay and grains, only 60% available to use for energy. Oils are three times, have three times more digestible energy than oats and have two and a half times more digestible energy than corn. Unprocessed oils also retain more antioxidant profiles. Another reason why I like oils, you cannot go wrong by providing the body with additional antioxidants. So processed oils like corn, canola, soy, coca soya, those are generally ones that you kind of want to just steer clear from. If you're thinking about adding oil instead of maybe doing a flax meal or a linseed meal or a meal like hemp, you can slowly start adding oil in at two ounce increments. Generally, I don't like to get don't like to get beyond one cup per day. However, there are some horses out there with special needs um, that we have used higher levels, but the horse's digestive system is really uh, a little bit different and is not made to to digest all that oil. Um, lastly, and you know maybe for some people in oats or grain might be their first option. I, I will use oatmeal and mix that with water for older horses. Um, oats is high in fiber and it, it, it does burn a little bit warmer and so it does generate some body heat as well as some other calories. Barley is another thing that I like to, to use. Um, I will, we will get some calls in here where they are, people are desperate. They, they're feeding high levels of grain, anywhere from 10 pounds up to 20, 20 some pounds. And um, they've gotten to a point of really no return. In other words, the grains are not providing the horse anything. We're not getting anything from feeding all of this grain. Well, too much grain in the digestive tract will disturb the delicate balance of, a micro, of the microbial population. Even at this point, the horse's appetite may be lost. They may not be, they may not become interested in eating anything, water, hay, or hay, grains, anything. Um, and no matter how much grain or whatever you feed, uh, the horse just continues to lose weight. So basically, when we get into this situation, we kind of have to start over from scratch, uh, get the digestive system working and stabilized, hydrated, um, 
And of course, whenever we're working with a horse's diet, because of their sensitivity of the digestive system, the very small stomach, the 100 feet of intestines, and things like that, um, we need to take, uh, not make sudden additions or increases of grain or even just unusual items that the horse has never been introduced to before, because it may cause colic or founder. So I usually take 7 to 14 days to sl slowly introduce something or make a change in the horse's diet. Other things to look for when we're trying to get uh, weight on a horse and we're not getting anywhere with the diet is, is teeth. Uh, if we senior horses um, battle molar loss, and no matter what age, you can have um, malalign malalignments. At this point, um, if the teeth are not able to grind and break down food properly, the, t the food particles become too large for the digestive system in the small intestine for the enzyme activity to break down food. But it also becomes too difficult for the microbes in the large intestine test and a cecum to break down those food particles. The result of that is little energetic benefit. That means we're going to get or reap little benefit from, from our food sources. And um, all of these things you want to take into consideration because it's, it's, it's not cheap to feed these large animals. They're, they're expensive to feed. The quality of our hay is, is becoming less and less, and so what we do feed them, we, we want to make sure that they're utilizing those nutrients. It's, it's so important. If you're thinking possibly you might have a horse that might be need, in need of a dentist or veterinarian, um, what you're going to see is slow eating, um, head tilt while, while eating, food falling from the mouth, and um, with the senior horses you'll see a lot of where they are chewing hay and it becomes into just a ball. It just rounds and rounds in a ball inside their mouth. Other things to look for, we're kind of scratching our head. The horse is scratching their head. And they're like, what else, what else can we do? When, you know, I've tried everything. Um, one of the first things that we look at is parasite load. A horse, a normal horse's di or immune system is supposed to handle parasite loads. That's what, one of the reasons that the immune system is there. Um, if you do chemical deworm, do so several weeks before winter. We need to, everybody knows deworming, chemical deworming will disrupt the digestive system and uh, then the body has to detox and rebalance itself. Um, some of those pairs are some, of, some dewormers. Um, I know when we're losing weight, weight on a horse, sometimes veterinarians like to do the uh, power pack, Panicure power pack. No matter what you do, um, you need to make sure that you're addressing all of this in early fall. We do not want to get into a situation where we're losing weight in the fall. We want to get a horse stabilized, their digestive system stabilized. If you are seeking an opportunity to move away from chemical deworming, although there are veterinarians now out there that they're starting to realize that constant chemical deworming is not, not working as well. So that what they've called is uh, strategic deworming. And um, the less stress that we can put on the digestive system, the better. But we have a product called NOMS. That's also another option for you. You can call into the office and we can discuss maybe doing something like that for you. Another thing that's often missed and overlooked is pain. Chronic pain releases epinephrine, which puts the body into a state of catabolism. Catabolism causes the breakdown of body stores, which ultimately results in chronic weight loss. It takes a lot of calories um, when you're standing there and you're in constant pain. It just takes a lot of calories. And so our senior horses, they generally fall into this category. They may be battling arthritis. and what What's difficult with our senior horses is that we're not maybe using them as often as, as we used to. So we may not notice that uh, they're off or they're lame or that their personality may have changed. You will see personality changes sometimes in horses with pain, but uh, sometimes they just hide that pain. You, you may not know. 
but consider that as a possible option. Um, disease. Um, if a horse is battling a uh, disease already, uh, it does take calories and a lot of energy to, to repair the body. Older horses or sometimes middle-aged horses, we may not see what's going on. We may have continued weight loss or inability to, to gain weight on a horse, and it could be because we have a tumor or something of that nature going on that has disturbed or disrupted how the digestive system works or is sucking up uh, the energy that's being simulated with food. Another thing is um, environment. Environment, uh, let's see, if a horse can go into a uh, place or shed where they can get out of the wind, where they don't have to battle cold rain or um, things of that nature is certainly going to reduce how many calories they use. They have a place where they can go in and uh, certainly generate some body heat or maintain the body heat that they do have that will that will reduce the calories that they that they will utilize. Um, another environment is uh, where we want to make sure that the horse has uh, time to eat. That they, you know, they're not. Oh, here comes Lucy, and she's going to come steal all my food, and so I got to gobble this down. If we get in that situation, the food is just being inhaled; it's not being broke down. We have those large food part, food particles getting into the digestive system. Um, it could be that maybe Lucy's or Lucy's coming over and stealing all this horse's food. Um, you need to keep a close watch on those situations. So that when the horse does have an opportunity to eat, it's a relaxed experience. Um, lastly, you want to look at is uh, stress levels. Stress levels may be physical, they may be mental, they may be psychological, but with any of these parasites, pain, disease, environment, and stress, if these are in play, they are stealing calories. So to keep these in mind. Um, supplements. Some of the supplements that we're going to look at, um, and I've placed them in order that uh, I generally will use. And I'll always start out with ABCs Plus. And a lot of you are probably already using ABCs Plus. Um, it provides food for bacteria. It provides an enzymatic profile. It provides an herbal profile. Um, it creates an environment or allows the horse's body to work in such a way that it works with the body. It provides these nutrients or these tools so that the digestive system can work properly. It does not flood the gut with live cultures, and sometimes that can, can cause you some problems. And we don't want a horse that's already in low calorie status uh, to, to kind of go through that stress, which can be thrown into a detox. Um, it keeps balance between pathogenic bacteria and good bacteria. Um, it has pre-digested nutrients, so that's why you'll see on the label we have calcium and some of these other things. Those are strictly for the soft tissue lining of the gut. That's, that's it. We're not supplying the host animal at all. Um, and when I use ABCs Plus, if I'm starting out with a horse that's already in a depleted state, um, I will start out with the aged horse dose, which is which is eight ounces. You can see that on the label, but a lot of people miss that. And that would be four scoops. Uh, the ABCs Plus comes with two ounce scoop. Um, and you can fluctuate ABCs Plus from four ounces to eight ounces, even use six ounces uh, seasonally if you need to, if you've got a horse that needs extra help at that particular time. So I, I, ABCs Plus does a world of good. I will incorporate um, Rush Creek Vitamin and Mineral. Uh, right now it's termed just mineral. However, Rush Creek is a very broad spectrum vitamin and mineral supplement. It's lacking selenium and salt. But uh, if we don't have proper amounts of vitamin and minerals available, uh, the horse is not going to be able to function properly. The, the cellular structures will not be able to, to function properly. Uh, so the best way to do that is to provide those nutrients so that 
um, the body can do. Uh, we're providing the tools so the body can, can do what it's meant to do. ABC's Fortify is ABC's Plus and Rush Creek Vitamin and Mineral put together. It's just uh, if you are unable to free choice, then the ABC's Fortified is helpful with that. I'll use ProBite, which is not as comprehensive as ABC's Plus. You use it as needed. It just has a handful of ingredients, but it does a fabulous job to stimulate appetite. It does a fabulous job at times to even stimulate um, a drinking response. But it is an on, it's a tool that can uh, stimulate the digestive system right away. It's a liquid, ABC's Plus is a pellet, uh, so you have instant, uh, instant gratification or is, instant assistance. I will use it several days in a row if I have a serious case, anywhere from 7 to 14 days. And then after that, I'll just use it as needed. It can be fed orally or top dress. Top dress is usually the simple way to go. Another product is energy. And a lot of people get scared of energy because of its name. It, though, is, was and has always been made to just provide extra calories. It's not going to uh, heat up your horse or generally change their attitude or anything like that. But it's got some of the technology that we discussed earlier. It has flax in it, and it has hemp, and it has beet pulp. It has some of those things. And so it may be a way to go for some people. Um, it's a product that we'll use on rescue horses. Um, it's going to be a simple way for their digestive system to start working again uh, instead of a grain product so that we take the population process in the, in the stomach and whatnot to get prepared to take on a larger meal or different types of, of products to get the horse back into good condition. The dosage level on energy can also range from 4 to 12 ounces, and so we fluctuate the, the dosage on that as well to, to meet the requirements of any particular horse. And joint, Jeremy's Joint Jolt. I use this in the senior horses, and I like to use that uh, for soft tissue pairs if we have a horse that might be dropping weight because they're in the process of a healing state. And so we can help us manage arthritis and things of that nature that, that um, may be causing pain. And so Joint Jolt does a really good job as a, as a pain management product. It also does a really good job of providing nutrients for soft tissue repair. And so it just it's helpful in removing that pain quotient that we had earlier that can steal or rob calories from our horse. Lastly, um, ABC, we've had this product for a while, and generally we'll just bring it out to the public again when it gets to be winter time. And it's called Winter Electrolyte plus, plus Chlorophyll. And horses are, are mainly desert animals. Um, they eat sparse twigs of grass. Um, so that's why they, we have difficulty in feeding them very lush diets. Their mechanism for thirst and cold weather has a tendency to get out of whack. And so it is a known fact that in the wintertime, water consumption decreases when the temperature falls. 